we have travelled to Interco's headquarters today to find out about something that you are using every day to make this into this. That's right, you guessed it, the sophisticated and surprisingly complex material that is steel. We will be talking you through what makes a steel and all of the processes it goes through to arrive on your door. You will be fascinated. So sit back, relax and enjoy the journey from element to end part. What is a metal? Well, a metal is an element from the periodic table. Metal is found in ore in rocks. In fact, these are the countries that some of these elements come from. Interesting? Yes, but these elements alone aren't always strong enough or useful enough on their own or have the properties that you are looking for. We therefore need to do something to produce an alloy or a steel which is often a much stronger, stainless or corrosion resistant material. Steels and alloys are made by blending metallic and non-metallic elements. Let me explain this process to you. As an example, let's make a complex stainless steel such as F55 Super Duplex. It's like a recipe where controlling the ingredients is crucial to the end product, but the preparation and cooking process is just as vital too, just like baking your favourite cake. So we take those elements that we were talking about earlier and then we add a few more and these become your list of ingredients. We melt these ingredients in a large cooking pot called a crucible. Here they are heated to approximately 1450 degrees C until molten and then poured into large moulds to produce ingots. At this early stage the ingot is then stamped with the all important heat or cast number. This is for end product traceability. I'll explain a little bit more about this later. For some materials at this stage they need a further melting process known as vacuum arc remelt. This is to refine the grain structure and to ensure there are no impurities or inclusions. So, we've got an ingot. The next stage is where we need to manipulate the ingot and pre-forge it to turn it into billet. So we are basically crushing the material with a huge machine to turn it into manageable form. From here, depending on the final product you're trying to make, dictates what production route the material takes. So these forms are what you will begin to recognise and see within your workshop. So it could be a wire, a round bar, a flat bar, a sheet or plate, or a pipe or tube, or it can be used for a reforge application. A largely recognised form is round bar, so let's talk about that with our F55 Super Duplex. From the billet, it goes into the GFM forge. This is a high-powered forging machine. The material is heated up, so it goes into a softer state to make it malleable and more easily shaped. This bar is called primary bar. It's black in colour and not ready yet. There's still more important processing to be done. So how do we take this primary stage steel into secondary stage steel? Listen carefully to this one as this is one of the most important facets of producing quality steel. It is the critically controlled heat treatment and water quenching process to produce the solution annealed austenitic ferritic structure that is super duplex stainless steel. The material is taken to a high heat temperature of about 1120 degrees C and held there for the required time to saturate the material at that temperature. Once that is achieved, the material must then be transferred to the water quench baths extremely quickly. This is critical to reduce unwanted phases within the microstructure of the material. It is plunged into the circulating quench. Almost imagine a high power jacuzzi with really powerful jets that it gets lowered into. The heat must then be dissipated to 260 degrees Celsius or lower. I mean, that is an unbelievable reduction in temperature in such a short space of time. And of course, accurate monitoring of water temperatures are a necessity to ensure a correct quench is achieved. And if not done perfectly, that part could be scrap and we don't want that. Finally, once the material has gone through rigorous testing, it is then straightened, 
machined and signed off for distribution. So back to this billet from earlier, the F55 Super Duplex has undergone all of the processes needed so far to get tested and retested to within an inch of its life. Oh, and we'll add on some more retesting too. So let's explain testing. The properties we are testing for are the mechanical, corrosion and metallographic elements of the required specification. And yes, that is a word. So after successful testing of the bar, it is then taken to the finishing department to be straightened, peeled or turned and a full non-destructive examination takes place. From there, we must ensure the cast number and identification is stamped on the bars. This is for absolute traceability and assurance of quality. It is supported by 3.1 certification or the 3.2 certification, which means it must be supported by third party witness. I bet you never knew that all of this goes into the production of the steel that you have on your shop floor. But it doesn't stop at production because we now have to process and distribute. That's where Interco's headquarters in Cheltenham comes into play. From the moment the bars arrive here, they are stocked and ready for processing. And there are three main processes. Let me explain what they are. One of the processes is fairly obvious, soaring material into customer length requirements. There is also first stage machining, which can include boring, blocking, turning, milling, and so on, all to near net sizes. And finally, identification. This is where Interco comes into their own as they have full traceability from mill source through to end user and where necessary with third party witness. Therefore, every single bar that is stocked here at Interco, Special Steels and Alloys, from when the actual materials are melted to when they are distributed are fully traceable with full certification and no compromise. Just think about that next time you purchase your material.